Welcome to the busy Latter-day Saint, where righteous desires and living life come together. Here, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints discuss their challenges and successes in studying the scriptures. I'm your host, Richard Bernard. The music for this program is by Marvin Goldstein and used with his permission. Please give this podcast a thumbs up and tap the subscribe button if you haven't already. Your thumbs up and subscription increases the show's ratings, thus making it easier for people to find. If you have any comments or would like to be a guest on the podcast, feel free to email me. Additionally, if you have someone in mind who would make a great guest, please let me know. To receive updates on the Gospel Library and news about this podcast, be sure to add your email to my website. I only send emails once a week, and rest assured that your email will not be sold. Links to my email and website are in the show notes. In this episode, we'll be hearing from Shelley Collins, who works in the priesthood and family department of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Shelley is responsible for overseeing the development of the Gospel for Kids app, which is specifically designed for primary aged children. This episode is a must-listen for parents and grandparents, as well as those who work in the primary. We will explore the various features of the app and gain insight into how it can assist children in learning gospel principles while simultaneously strengthening their testimonies. And now, here's Shelley. Shelley, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thank you. Yeah, we've had some trouble hooking up here. Um, evidently, uh, your employment with the church gets in the way of doing the things I want to do. Oh. <laughs> So. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a worthy, worthy reason. <laughs> so anyway, we're finally able to, to hook up here, and I realize that you've got a, a schedule you're working with, and, and I appreciate you taking the time. Um, I just want to get a little bit personal information about you. First of all, how long have you been working with the church? Um, I've worked here for about three and a half years. Okay, and what did you do before that? Uh, before that, I worked actually at Shriners Hospital for Children as an x-ray technologist. Oh. So, yeah, I came, it was quite a job change. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> quite a change. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it was, it's been great. What brought about the change? Um, just, I was just looking for, for something different to do and um, felt inspired to apply at the church and that's just kind of unfolded from there. Wow. Well, your family, uh, you're married? Yes. Yep. Been married for over 30 years. Okay. And children? I have four children. Um, my oldest is, uh, he uh, lives in Ogden. And then I have a daughter living in Bountiful and then a son at the University of Utah and a daughter who just graduated from high school. Oh, okay. So you're an empty nester? Yes, looking kind of forward to it <laughs> in some ways. Uh, how do you like being an empty nester? Um, it's it's kind of interesting to be able to have that time to explore those things that that you couldn't do when you had kids at home. So so yeah, it's kind of busy right now. I'm working on my MBA, and uh, my job is pretty pretty. Uh, Oh, wow. I didn't consumed. know that. Your MBA. When will you finish yeah. up with that? I'm hoping to finish in January of next year. Okay. Well, that's quite uh, quite an accomplishment. What made yeah, you Yeah, well, my brain doesn't work like it used to. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're discovering as we get older, our brains just don't work the same, huh? Yes. Yes. <laughs> A little more effort. <laughs> So what brought about this desire to um, to get your MBA? Just I've always wanted to to finish it up and now it just seemed like a good time to do it. So I applied at Western Governors and um, that's that's where I'm going through now and I really oh. enjoy I like their format. Okay, so it's something you started with and Yeah. Okay. And what is your bachelor's in? Um, my bachelor's is in health administration. Okay, that would make sense with the previous occupation. <laughs> yeah. What does your husband do? Uh, my husband works, uh, he is a materials management. He does materials management for a medical supply company. Oh, okay. So both of you were in the medical business. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, one of the reasons I wanted to get together with you is um, I met you for the first time at Women's Conference, and uh, you were gracious enough to um, help me at the booth that we had there for all the apps that the church offers. And um, I found out that you're the one that kind of oversees the um, the gospel for kids. Yeah. And so uh, you taught me some things about the gospel for kids. In fact, I've got my phone right here in front of me. I've got the app up. <clears throat> and you were teaching me some things I wasn't aware of. But let's first of all get in. What is the purpose of this app? Um, the purpose of the app is just to help children learn about gospel principles um, and to help them prepare for baptism and to make their temple or, or, and to prepare for young men and young women's and making temple covenants. Okay, well, you no longer have little tiny um, patters of feet running around your house. I do not, no. But you have grandchildren? I didn't ask. No, nope, no grandchildren yet. Okay. So. Well, Which I'm okay with. let's assume you do have grandchildren and you've, you've decided, uh -huh. uh, as that happens in our family, all of a sudden we get a phone call and we need um, one of us to come and look at, watch the grandchildren because some emergencies come up. Let's assume that's happened to you and you've got some grandchildren around you. How would you use the uh, gospel for kids with them? Um, well, there's, there's several sections of the app that are really engaging for children. The first and the most popular section is the coloring book app, or this, the I'm sorry, the coloring book section of the app. Um, it has the coloring pages, um, allows children to select crayons and, and fill in um, religious coloring pages. Okay, that was not phrased very well, but <laughs> um, yeah, so the coloring pages are pretty engaging. The scripture stories portion is really nice. Um, those are the uh, children's scripture stories, and they are in video format, so you can cast them onto a television and watch as a group, or you can just watch on your device. Okay, well, I'm here in the coloring book section. Yeah. And um, I'm going to... Now, you've got Old Testament, and then you've got Old Testament again. Um. Yes. So... Yes, the the one on the top, the Old Testament, one of the Old Testament ones is the church's coloring, uh, coloring and activity book. And the other one was uh, developed by a different developer. Oh, I see. So it's just different. Um, I can tell the artwork is a lot different here. Yeah. Yeah. And so if I tap on Book of Mormon here, and I see that I've got um, quite a few... Yeah, probably about a dozen here of uh, pages to color. Um, mm -hmm. One shows uh, uh, Lehi and I guess Nephi and <laughs> somebody on the boat. And um, so now um, I, I tap on that and I see there are little crayons at the bottom. And uh, yes. I'm able to color with my finger. Um, there's also three dots here. I can just also pour that color into a section. Yeah, which is really nice. The kids really like that bucket where you can, where you, when you select the bucket, that allows you to fill in a whole area uh -huh. at a time. So that seems to be the most popular way for kids to, to want to color these pages is to fill in, use the bucket symbol and fill in all of the, the pieces at a time. Okay. And I see there's an eraser if I want to repent and change my uh, color. <laughs> yes. No, always important <laughs> to be able to fix your mistake. And um, now I, I know you have access to the analytics and so uh, that's why you know what people are using. Is, is the coloring <clears throat> section the most popular? It is the most popular right now. It's the most interactive. So that's the ones, you know, kids like to, to get in and do things um, rather than just watching or listening. So the coloring books are popular because that allows the child to engage with the app. Okay. At the moment. What section do you wish they would be more active in? Um, there is a really nice section, the Articles of Faith section, that um, has a slider bar on it that allows the kids to, it helps them to memorize the articles of faith. So, and a lot of kids don't, don't find this section, 
But um, so that's where parents can be helpful in, in pointing children to to participate here. But yeah, if you go into Articles of Faith, there's a slider bar at the bottom and you can roll that back and forth and make words disappear. Um, and that helps the children to to memorize. There's also a uh, play button there so that the children can listen to the Article of Faith. Um, and then we have designed the artwork to reflect the concept of the article of faith so that children can associate, they can look at the pictures and, and get a sense of what the article of faith means. Okay, well, I'm on the first article of faith and I see the slide at the bottom. There's something at the beginning of the slide that shows a large A and a lowercase a. And when I tap on that, that changes, but I don't see anything in the... It, it takes away the first letter. So... Of, of each word. So we left the first letter of each word when you're sliding to as kind of a hint. Okay. But if you tap on that, on that big A and the little A, then that first letter disappears okay. so that it's more memorization. And then and as I slide, I've got it all the way to the right. I have to describe this for the listening audience. <laughs> um, as I slide it to my left, I can see some letters start disappearing. And so it can get down to where I just see a, a one letter for each word. And then they can try to um, do that. Do you suggest that, uh, like in primary, they, they use this app? They can put it on a large screen? Yeah, they could. Yeah, and make even as a, as a, uh, a music leader or somebody who is maybe teaching the Articles of Faith songs, you could cast it onto a larger TV device and um, you, it would be a screen share um, in this section of the app. And then you can use the slider bar to, and you could invite children up to the front of the, to the front of the room to use the slider bar themselves and, and choose um, how many hints they want to give their classmates. Okay. Now, is there a way that this can be used in preparation for the primary program that they do every year? Um, yeah, if you wanted to encourage your primary classes to maybe memorize an article of faith to recite at the primary program, yeah. And then I tap on more activities, it takes me to the Gospel Library. Yeah, so the more activities will link out to other apps and, and activities. So um, the Gospel Library will go to, um, and we have a little parent gate there, so you get to test your multiplication skills. <laughs> um, and this is just so that children aren't aren't exiting the app without their parents' knowledge. But the gospel, the link to the gospel library will go to the gospel library app if it's installed on your phone, and if it's not installed on a phone, it will go to a the a locked browser um, for gospel library. Okay. Well, I tapped on gospel library, and I've got a serious problem. Um, I got to remember what six times six is. Uh, yes. <laughs> when we were testing this section, we all got very, very good at our multiplication. So, and we did that. It's it's an easy way for for to kind of slow kids down uh, when they get to, when they hit the parent gate, so that parents yeah. have to. Have so to I I'm just going to put in 25, and I'm just curious. See, I, I'm a geek, so I'm the one that pushes all the buttons and tries to figure ways around things. So yeah. I'm going to submit 25 and see what happens here. It tells me it's the incorrect answer. Yes. And now it doesn't give me another chance for six times six. It says eight times eight. Yes. It's getting harder. So we change that. It does. <laughs> so, okay. All right. And then so it'll also take us, uh, I'm moving back to more activities. It'll take us to the gospel library, or I'm sorry, gospel media. And I yes. tap on that. And of course, it's asking me to um, do my multiplications here. And then uh, we can also go to family search. Yes. And gospel media is a fun one. So we don't put the videos in the app, like the animated, the covenant path animated videos. Um, and some of the other things that you can find on the Gospel for Kids YouTube channel, we don't put those in the app because it takes takes up too much space. So instead, we have linked to Gospel Media so that children have access to the to that Gospel content as well okay. from the app. Now, I was surprised. Uh, someone in our primary, I went up to her actually a few days after I had met you, 
And I said, are you aware of the gospel for kids? And she says, no. And I was actually quite surprised and I suggested maybe you should take a look at it. And um, she says, oh, and I said, no, I'm serious. You really should take a look at it. And I, from her expression, I kind of felt like, okay, you've told me enough. <laughs> um, but evidently, people don't know about this app. Yeah, it's not. It's kind of a, a best kept secret right now. So thank you for advocating for us. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, we we started developing the app a couple of years ago, and we've been doing some things on on the back end to make sure that it's working well. Um, so hopefully, as we as we get a little bit further in development, we can raise awareness. But yeah, we appreciate anybody you know spreading the word about the app. I think it has some really great content now, and we hope to do good things with it in the future. Well, since you have access to the analytics, uh, just approximately how many users do you have? Um, I think we have about 140,000 right now, okay. All right. Um, mostly, mostly in the U.S. Um, so, But the, the app is available. You can go into the settings and change it from English to Spanish to Portuguese. Um, so it's, it is available in the three languages that you can toggle within the app, just like for Gospel Library. You can change lang languages within Gospel Library. All right. And then you led me to a section. I don't know if I can find it again. Uh, showed American Sign Language. Um, so the American Sign Language was actually in Gospel Library online. Oh, okay, um, Gospel Library. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Those are there's a children there's a children's collection in the Gospel Library, and uh, that collection has all kinds of yes. children's content. Yeah. Okay. Well. I was thinking it was something separate in the um, in the the Gospel for Kids app. Well, is there anything about else about the app that we should know, or you want to share? Um, just we have the, the only section I think that we haven't really talked about is the sing along is the music section, um, which is also kind of a fun, a fun little place to go. Um, that is where we have uh, sing along songs. So the lyrics are added to the bottom of the videos so that children can can uh, learn the, the lyrics to songs. I know a lot of uh, primary music leaders use these also in uh, sharing times or as they're teaching children's songs. All right, well, I tapped on that and I see uh, children's songs, hymns, and mm -hmm. uh, the children's songs, uh, the icon there looks like the children's songbook. The hymns, and again, I have to describe it for the audience here, the hymns is the green hymn book. <laughs> and then we mm -hmm. have a playlist. So I tap on children's songs, tap on a child's prayer, and I see, uh, a beautiful young lady there in prayer. And I see down at the bottom, I can shuffle uh, in that song and turn voices on and off. And uh, there's that. And then of course, I can find it by hymn number or by topic. The hymn book, it looks like just the regular, It's no, it's not, it's, it's a little bit different. And then you said there's a playlist here, and um, it's already populated with, in June, eight songs. So it, it, are these eight songs in preparation for primary presentation for sacrament meeting? Yeah, so the, the two playlists, one is the Articles of Faith playlist, so it's the Articles of Faith songs. The other is a Come Follow Me playlist. And that Come Follow Me playlist has music out of the Come Follow Me manual and also the primary uh, singing time manuals. So so those are pre-populated and then people can create their own playlists. Okay. And are these in... I'm always thinking of different usage. Can this be used within yeah. primary time or is it meant just for a child and a parent to enjoy together? Um, I think it can be both. If if you're a music leader, you could, like I say, share share your screen and and pull up the lyric videos, and and your primary kids can learn the lyrics to the songs. And we're also working to make the songs so that the pictures, that the images that are used in the songs, are reflective of 
the content of the song. So it kind of helps to reinforce those principles. As a parent, you can create a playlist for your child to listen to as they as they go to bed at night or in as at playtime and, and whatnot. So um I will I will say that this section is going through some uh, some renovations here. There's some things that we need to do to make it uh easier to or, or to make the experience better in Spanish and Portuguese, which means that some of these features may have to go away, unfortunately. But uh so this this section is in a little bit of construction phase right now. Okay, I'm gonna have my neighbor actually is the um, I don't know her title. I I don't know primary titles, but she's the one that leads the songs in primary, <laughs> uh, whatever her whatever title that is. Um, so I'm gonna have to ask her when I see her outside sometime if she's uh, familiar with the app. All right. Well, if you were the primary president in your ward. How would you be using this? Um, I think I would show it to my teachers as a resource for them to use in their classrooms. Um, the scripture stories are helpful, especially the uh, updated Old Testament stories for children um, are helpful to, to um, supplement classroom lessons because they're animated, they're engaging for children, they're written on um, a child level to help them understand the understand the scriptures so okay. so i think that's what i would do as primary president okay i i occasionally i have to interpret in primary for we have a deaf child uh that attends the sacrament or i'm sorry church and um i i'm there and i see this young couple really struggling to explain like the ten virgins mm -hmm. and i see that where this could be helpful um, yes. because th th they just had trouble. Well, first of all, <laughs> um, I don't know if I'd use the word virgins with the young children that are six years old because they don't know what that means. I just say there was six young ladies or, you know, uh, that they were virgins is not important for the child. Um, and so what I see with this app, it would enable someone who's trying to figure out how to simplify these stories uh it's kind of here for them yeah yeah it gives it gives a little bit maybe different ways to explain things that and and it breaks down the important principles too it pulls out those those important things to to talk about yeah. um we do we do when when the scripture stories are written we try to stick very close to what the scripture actually says so I'm looking at um, the New Testament right now. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm looking at the New Testament. If that story is... Um, Let's see. There. Um, Let's see. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so so in this one, they also call it the Ten Virgins, um, just because that's the scriptural term for it. Oh, but oh, when you go into the story, they call them Ten Young Women. So yeah, you're right. Okay. But look, I haven't looked at that individual story for a while, so... Yeah, I'm tapping on it here. Now, what I'm tapping on, it, there's an icon to play it. Yes. Chapter 47, The Ten Virgins. Jesus told a story about ten young women who yep. went to a wedding. Okay, yeah, it shows. So, and you can, turn, you can turn the text on and off. So as you tap that picture, it will either show the words or you can turn the words off so you can just watch the video and listen to the listen to the story or you can turn the text on oh, I and see. just read the story or you can play it and read the text at the same time okay oh and i can slide back and forth and if yes. i tap on the text it goes away and if i tap again it comes back okay yes yeah. Yes, and that now I'll, I'll warn you, the experience in the Old Testament is a little bit different because those have been updated. Um, so it, when you go into Old Testament and, and read a story, it will give you the option to do a video or a storybook. Um, yeah, I the see. Video, 
Yep, that was designed that way. These these videos have a little bit of motion to them, the, the parallax, whereas the old ones don't. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a video experience. And so we we broke those two experiences out so that you can more easily cast a video onto a larger screen and watch as a group. Uh, the storybook section will be very similar to the others where you can turn the text on and off. You can listen to it. You can swipe through the pages. Okay, I see that. It says video and storybook, and I'm on Adam and Eve. Slide to the left, and there's a slide. And uh, this shows the scriptures, the references. And I can tap the, the, di the text on and off. Okay. All right, well, um, I will definitely talk to my neighbor. <laughs> now that I know a little bit more about the app myself. But I think it's a great app. I, I really do. And I think that uh, members of the church need to understand that this is not something that's easy to do. <laughs> First of all, you got to have the developers and then you've got to have the artwork. And, and it, it takes a lot of work. And, um, and then, of course, we're doing the Lord's work. And so, you know, this is... It, it, it's got to be geared toward young young children mm -hmm. and and that creates a problem because our young children don't think like adults <laughs> and I'm grateful <laughs> <No>. for that <laughs> but things are very simple for them and we've got to find a way to to explain and, and I have to say those teachers that did do the um the ten virgins and the lamps. I thought they did a great job, but I could see they were really struggling to to bring it down to uh, the the level of the class that they were in, and that, I think that's the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is, but it's so important. Yes, it is absolutely. Well, I appreciate the work that uh, your department's doing. Now you're in the priesthood family department, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, um, just out of curiosity, how many total are actually working on this? Um, working on the app? <clears throat> well, let's see. Probably, there's probably five or six of us on this, <clears throat> excuse me, on the strategic planning side of it. And then um, I think we have two developers for each platform. Um, and then a U a user designer. So maybe 12 to 15 people total. Yeah. Yeah. I would say there's 12 or 15 people. And yeah. those are resources the church is paying for. And and so I, I think people need to appreciate it's not only this, but um, some of this is hooked up to servers and things, and those are additional costs. I bring this out because the church is serious about these apps and they really want us to use them. I, I think I think that they, at least for me, we're serious about the audience and and children and what is what is best for for them. And um, we feel like there's a lot of children in this digital space, and there's parents who who um, a, a, who have access to this information that can and so we, we're really trying to develop something that will that will help the children understand gospel principles yes yes and i think it's uh i i know it's going to continue to improve and um i think it's a great app well oh, before we get to a close here i want to ask yeah. you a little bit about uh, how you study the scriptures um how i study the scriptures i actually have been leaning a little bit uh more towards broadening my my scripture study so i use a lot of the uh footnotes and stuff the electronic footnotes which are really nice in gospel library to just be able to while i'm within the scriptures be able to follow those sometimes it becomes a little bit of a rabbit hole <laughs> as i'm moving from from one one resource to the next but it does it does lend lend to more of a study by topic almost than than just a straight reading of the scriptures all right and do you have a particular time of day you study? Usually in the morning, is, in the morning. is when I like to study before it kind of gets me in the right mindset as I'm, as I'm coming into work and yeah. make sure that I have the spirit with me when I start yeah. my day. How did you manage that when you had children at home? Um, 
not as not as consistently. <laughs> 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 that's, that's for sure. But um, yeah, you just find find your times during the day when it's when it's kind of quiet. And I'm when they were smaller, I probably studied more at night just because that was my quiet time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like midnight, you know, when you sacrifice sleep the night before thinking, oh, I'll be OK the next day. Yeah. <laughs> well, now you use electronic version now. Do you use your phone using some type of tablet or are you using um, the online version? I usually just use my phone just because it's just right there. Okay. Um, I'll use my the online version if I'm preparing a lesson or something just because the screen is bigger. Okay. And do you use tags and notes? Um, not usually. Well, no, I take that back. I use notes actually pretty frequently, um, but I, I don't usually tag, tag things. Okay. And what about notebooks? I have notebooks. Yep. I have a, a couple different ones. I have one where I save like when I'm reading conference talks and I want to save a quote. So I have a notebook for, for quotes. I have a notebook for highlighted scriptures. So I'll add, I'll highlight a scripture and add it to that notebook and then put my impressions at, in uh, tied to it as a note. And then I have a notebook that's just a journal. And I, I the, and I really like that it's synced that I can put it on, I can make those notes on my phone and it will sync to like my online so I can access it from any of my devices. So yes, I yeah. do like that. Yeah, the syncing. Now, do you use bookmarks? Um, I did. I, I did when I was like preparing lessons and things, I would bookmark different, different things that I was researching for lessons. But now that I'm just more straight reading through i don't use i don't use a lot of bookmarks okay. but i have in the past do you use anything outside the gospel library like the blue letter bible um not in digital format i i will i have a new international version of the bible that sometimes i will read just to get a little bit of a different um not really interpretation but experience i guess with with the scriptures okay so all right. Um, is there any other resource books you use other than what you just mentioned? Um, no, sometimes I'll look at the Institute manuals. Mm -hmm. I really kind of like having access to those in Gospel Library as yes. well as looking at the Institute manuals. Um, but yeah, that's mostly what I use for my okay. study. Um, are you familiar with the study helps? I've heard of them. Yeah, if if you go to the Gospel Library and just go to the, the home page there, uh, go to Scriptures, and then it says Study Helps. I, uh, I have access to the analytics for the Gospel Library, so I know what people are, oh, not, yeah, yeah. That oh, are okay. using and not using. But um, my wife was uh, teaches the Gospel Doctrine, and she was making people aware of the Study Helps, and some people were going... I didn't know that was there. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of useful information for studying the scriptures, like uh, the harmony of the gospels. Most people don't seem to know what that is. And if they do, they didn't know it's, 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 it's available for us. So yeah, this is, it's the, uh, it's the old topical guy or it's the old, uh, guides and stuff that were attached to this that are yeah in the yeah script. we have index to the triple combination reference guide difficult. to the book of mormon reference guide to the holy bible bible chronology is really important and then we have the joseph smith translation appendix and so forth and and as i was having my wife hopefully to tell the class that these maps are really important and uh, to be able to use them and get a picture of what's happening and where it's happening. All right. All right. Now, I do know that you've got a meeting coming up. And so, and you probably have some preparation for the meeting, or maybe you don't. Maybe you just <laughs> wing it every time, but I doubt that's what <laughs> happens. So anyway, um, we'll end a little early here, but I would like to end with your testimony, if you wouldn't mind sharing that. 
Oh, absolutely. And thank you so much for, for the opportunity to come talk to you today. I, I appreciate, I get a little passionate about children's resources. So, and I would just like to invite anybody that um, has feedback or ideas. Uh, we do have an email address. So it's gospel for kids at church of Jesus Christ.org. Um, you can reach out directly to me. And, and if you have suggestions for children's resources or feedback from me, from using them, um, Anyway, yes, and I, I I appreciate the invitation to to close with my testimony as well. I do love this gospel. I'm so I feel so blessed to be able to to work on lifting the next generation of of members. These children are so special, and and they have such a great capacity for feeling and sharing the love of Jesus Christ in its purest form. Um, and it's just amazing to be able to have the opportunity to, to work with them. I love my savior, Jesus Christ. I love the scriptures and, and I love being part of a church that's led by a living prophet. And I do bear my testimony that, um, Jesus lives, he loves us and he knows each of us, um, by name and has tender feelings for, for all of our, um, mortal experiences. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen.